I really wanted to say, and I'm not talking as a county councillor now, I'm just talking as a, as a human being, which makes a pleasant change, um, <laughs> about what we did um, with our house. Um, both of us are kind of very committed um, environmentalists, and we moved from a very drafty and a small cottage, small holding um, house, cottage, uh, into something a bit larger, because we had a lot of grandchildren, and I was no good as a mother, but I had thought I'd better make up for being a grandmother. So, like a lot of um, couples going into their 60s, uh, we bought really a house that was a bit too big, um, with the idea that we'd live there for 10 years. And so, uh, then was hit by um, a bad conscience about having a big house. So, we moved into a um, 1970s, what we then found out was not very well built house, which actually looked out on fields and someone else's small holding to see them struggle with the sheep and the mud and the cattle and the want to come in, which is all good fun when they're not yours. Um, but uh, we thought it had double glazing, we thought it was this, we thought it was that, and we found in about two years that it was cold, it was drafty, and it was very fuel inefficient. So we did a number of things just to kind of address the um, previous <coughs> speaker. The first thing we did, which we thought might solve it, was to put up thin curtains across every window, but um, that didn't really work and we found that doors leaked and, and so on. Um, so we really thought, no, we've got to really think about this. In addition to being interested in small holding, we were also very, were very passionate about the rivers in East Sussex. Um, I've been a member of what used to be the Sussex Ooze Conservation Society, which is now the Ooze and Ada River Trust, just changed its name. Um, and I'm very conscious about the amount of abstraction that goes on uh, into the River Ooze. And uh, you will know, or you may not know, but I know as a cons conservator, that at which cross there is a reservoir, there's a buried tank reservoir, which has been leaking for 11 years. That is water, which is treated water, coming up from the Barkham drinking works and meandering slowly back. And it's not even going back into the ooze, it's going into the rother, which is even more annoying. So if you go up onto the Witch Cross and you walk down by that reservoir, you'll come across a very unnatural wetland. And for the officers and rangers on the forest, they're saying that's been there for 10 years and there's all sorts of unusual frogs. And my view is that is water which is leaking and should not be leaking. So we did sort of various things, and um, one of the major differences that we made in the house was putting in a small wood burning um, uh, stove in the sitting room. We couldn't heat water with it. And we found that by having that on, we don't light it all the time, light it in the evenings and it's on the weekends. That took the chill off the house. The second thing we did was to renew the oil pump in the central heating. That saved a huge amount of oil. So between those two things in one year, we found that our oil consumption was very low compared to what it had been. But uh, then, well, finally, and it was finally, so it's not in historic value, as the windows were looking actually quite dangerous, we, we bit the bullet and we redid all the windows in sustainable wood frames and really good, thick, proper double glazing, including all the exterior doors. Mm. It was a bit expensive, but actually it returned, the return on um, electricity, we don't have gas, we have oil and electricity, was phenomenal. So it won't pay back in five years. We were actually looking at a 10 year payback. We think in the 10 years that will kick in. So we were doing those, those um, efforts to try and make the house more sustainable, but then we really thought, well, it's all right about power, but actually what we're passionate about is water. We put in a water meter, and as we are maybe two people that come from a generation that don't have two or three showers a day, um, I used to have one bath a week and I was a child, it didn't do me any harm, but no, we do, obviously we use, we use quite a lot of water. Um, but it did make us aware of the water that we were using and the water in the garden because we have a, a, um, a garden and we have a vegetable plot in it and those of you that are keen on growing vegetables will know that they always need water at times when it's not raining. 
So we didn't, again, want to break those pipe bounds. And we then, in looking into it, came across the notion of rain harvesting. <coughs> now, in New Zealand, where my um, <coughs> son's in-laws live, it's very common for people to have quite sustainable big tanks underground, built as part of the house, which takes the rainwater off the roof. There are schemes in Australia as well. And uh, actually there were pre-war schemes in Norfolk, which seems to have run into um, abeyance. And we looked into that, and what we found was that we could get two big tanks. Now, if you think of a tank that's about that high and about that wide, um, and it holds 5,000 litres of water. Um, that's an awful lot of water. Um, and it comes off the roof and goes down the gutters, hopefully, and the gutters are all working clean. No, it is quite efficient, actually. And in one normal rainy day, if those tanks were empty, in one normal day, they will fill up to halfway. So a very heavy spade, like it was the other day, and they're full. So it doesn't need weeks and weeks and weeks of, of rain to fill them. Now the average person, uh, young person, and I have to, I have to be quite um, generational about this because it is proven <laughs> that young people use more water, uses 170 litres a day. We don't. We know we, we don't. Um, so the 5,000 litres um, <coughs> gives us water for a month. That's free water, basically. So what happens? It comes down the roof and it goes through a filter which takes out leaves and general grot and then goes into the tanks. Now we do put in a small amount of swimming pool chemicals just to keep the water sweet because um, sometimes it's not pumped out all the time. There's a small pump and that brings it up into the water tank in the roof. And that feeds all the lavatories and all the showers and basins. And we tell people, just don't drink it. I mean, we have drunk it, and I'm here to tell the day. But it's something that we you know, advise visitors, well, actually, I wouldn't drink it. So it flushes all the loos, and it does the showers, so we all have lovely hair because it's rainwater. Um, and goes in. We use, in the kitchen, we use mains, partly because we need a source of potable water, and also we need the water pressure to drive the washing machine. It, it operates a lot on pressure. So in other words, we're saving a huge amount on that. And it is claimed um, that um, we save 70% on our water bills and 70% on our sewage, because of course the water's not going out um, through the um, storm drains and into the sewage. And we feel that of all the things that we've put in the house, we're the sort of happiest with that. Um, of course, during the times of big rainfall, we have, we are, we've got loads of water. So that's good in, in, in many ways. In the summer times, if we know that a drought is forecast and we've got water, we will switch the tanks to mains and uh, because my husband's a very keen gardener, he will keep those tanks for irrigating vegetable gardens. So we're not drawing on mains water for that because we're great believers you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't overwater anyway. Um, so all in all, in terms of the environmental things that we've put in, that is really highly efficient. Um, it cost 5,000 pounds to put in and we've had it in eight years. And my husband and I were trying to calculate whether it was paying back. Well, of course, it is obviously paying back, but um, you know, it will be the ten-year. It will be a ten-year payback. Um, at the same time as we put that that system in, we did put in a small solar panel system because the company had a deal of doing both. It's not like the modern solar panels, and it only just heats um, the hot water system. But that's quite good when it, on, on, on good days it works really well. So we've, we've turned the house round. It's now very warm. Um, and talking, uh, thinking about the last um, 
speaker, we were devastated that my cleaning lady lives in a fuel, in a nasty 1960s house. Her electricity bill was half as much again as ours in a big house. And that's because it's a house that just leaks heat. It's got thin walls. It's a terrace house. It's got nothing in the roof. The windows are all in bad condition. Not because, she, you know, she's, she's a, a, a good woman, but just because it's badly built. And when we looked at our, our, our electricity bill, we said, oh my God, that's terrible. That is terrible. Just because we were able to have the money. Because we thought, are we going to put in a bank? Some bank director makes up with it now. You know what I mean? And there's no very little return. Or whether we would actually put our money where our mouth was. And we're very committed environmentalists like that. But it did, it did have a payback, but it's a, it is a long term. On the other hand, when um, my daughter occasionally pressures us to think about moving at some time, um, that value on the house is, is very high, so it may well, it won't, it won't bring back you know, another 100,000, but it, it will sustain its value and it will, will keep it going, and it is definitely... Um, a really good house for ticking over. So a lot of people are quite surprised. We are careful about water, without a doubt. But um, the rain harvesting system, um, I'm really pleased with. I, mean, I, would, I would have it on every... If, if I were on the planning committee, I would make it law that every house, that every new house, should have a rain harvesting system and, um, you know, and a solar, solar panels. So it's short and sweet, but if anyone would like to ask yeah. questions, yes. We've had that very statement earlier on today that every house should have this rainwater mm. harvesting system. Yes. It makes great sense. Could I ask you a technical question? Yes. Running the dishwasher and washing machine, was there any option of a, like a low pressure pump from the from your tank to, to power those machines? Uh, it's already it's got a low pressure it's got a low pressure um, pump to bring the water up to the house. Yeah. Um, they just thought it would be a drain on the energy. I'm afraid I'm not. Um, no, I just, I just had to go. I had to say to the, um, uh, you know, take the advice of the people that installed it, and they didn't. We thought about it, and then they said, "Well, you know, you never know, and um, um, it, you know, how, it, it's a filtration system broke down and leaves got into the washing machine or the." So Something more about things as well. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think they were they were just keener. And these modern machines do seem to to use quite a lot of even the even the low energy ones seem mm -hmm. to use quite a lot of high pressure. How many stories is your house? How much two. head of water have you got on the tank? So it's just normal two, two story a house yeah. with something in the loft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yes. The only bad news we had in the first winter was that we forgot that of course it's on the north side of the house. And we went away for a month and turned everything off. <laughs> it's completely frozen. The two tanks are completely frozen. Oh. Unfortunately, they weren't full, so there's an expanding room went on there. <laughs> they're on the ground. No, they are above ground. Yeah, above ground. They are above ground. Um, we thought about putting them underground, mm. which of course would be the better solution. Um, we would only just have enough room because we've got we've got a sort of mm. you know passageway there and our neighbours similarly. And um, we were advised it was a bit near the foundations of the house. Yeah. But if it was built from scratch, of course, like they do in New Zealand and so on, it would be fabulous. Mm -hmm. So it's not terribly attractive. It's surrounded, as one does with your central heating oil tank, with sort of attractive bamboos and <laughs> all sorts of things like that. But I'm curious the point you made about um, feeding things like dishwashers and yeah. bathroom sinks and showers, because one of the things, when, when we looked into this recently, was that they say you should should pump it to a, a, an area where it might be consumed, which you could do in a shower activity. Yes, yes. But I don't know whether that's become part of regulation, whether anybody knows that. Oh, I don't maybe know. Maybe it's an issue. Maybe I eight really years ago it was different. But. It might have been. It might have been. I mean, that's why we check the old chemicals, mm. you know, because then it's a bit, it's not as strong as the swimming pool chlorine. Mm. Mm. Um, but it's not far off what is in... Um, because I live in Barkham, I'm very aware of the amount of chlorine in the drinking water because we're right near the two. And some days it's worse than drinking something out of a swimming pool. I mean, the smell of chlorine <laughs> off it is awful. Do you get this up here? Not so bad. No, it, doesn't it, does travel, it doesn't travel up maybe so much or maybe get water from somewhere else. It does come from, uh, mostly from Ardingly. 
Oh, direct from Ardingly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. You see, ours comes from Ardingly into the Ouse, down the Ouse to Barkham, and then round to see. It's used as the. Um, I think it comes by pipes from there. Cause yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's so it's not as we don't ever make it as strong as potable water. But my husband actually is uh, test water for all kinds of mm. people. So it's not far off that. But it's I don't know whether health, what health and safety would say now. Well, our, our water is terrible. It just stinks sometimes. Yes. Yes. You're in West Sussex. Huh? You're in West Sussex. No. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sometimes, particularly if the water levels are low, mm. and um, you know when they're abstracting from the river, and the river is low, then you know you know that they're going to be putting loads of, of chlorine in mm. at, at the mills. Well, I wish you good luck if that's what you you know you want to do. But you know how they used to say invest to save, and so we've decided at the house to really put in quite a lot of money there to to try and recoup. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.